Hello everyone, Kiki here and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be about Chidu Box and how I go about setting up my supports in Chidu Box. I just want to be straightforward with you guys. This is not a full tutorial. I'm literally just mostly going to be going over the supports and showing you guys a few projects and how I went about setting up my supports. I did, however, change a few of my settings, which I will go over. However, there's no specific all proof settings that will work for every single project. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. So, so I'm just going to be showing you guys a few examples and how I tackled these specific projects. Here are a few things that I've successfully printed on my Mars and Saturn printers, which pretty much have full success over after a few attempts and really understanding it. I think it's been a lot easier for me to print and most of the time everything comes out pretty accurately to how I want it to come out. I don't really do any miniature printing. I do a few small things, but not really to that scale and detail. So if you're looking for something more in the lines of printing for miniatures, this may not be the video for you. I don't know, maybe you'll learn something useful, but mostly it comes down to setting up your orientation of your print, how it's gonna be angled, the placement, and where your undercuts are. Once you kind of get that figured out, adding the supports is another thing. And to be honest, there's not really only one way to do it. There's several ways you can kind of do this with successful prints. So please keep that in mind. And this is just kind of what I've been doing and what has worked for me. I'm sure over time, I might change my methods as well. So I hope this comes helpful to you. And if this seems like something you're interested in, please stick around. Thanks. All right, so we're just gonna open Chidu Box here. And this is just kind of what it looks like if you're already familiar with it. And again, I'm just going to be going over just kind of where I add my supports and the slicing settings. Not as big. So starting on the top supports, I changed this one to 20. And this one here, 30. And most everything else, I pretty much kept the same. And as far as the bottom, I did change the touch diameter um, down to 10. And as far as my raft, I did change the raft diameter to 115, 115. And I pretty much left everything the same. Mostly, I changed the contact point. So getting a successful print um, really depends on a lot of your orientation and how you decide you're going to print the piece, um, as well as trying to avoid having any overhangs or anywhere there where there's no contact. So when we look at the beginning of our piece, we can, for example, see if we had supports here and here, help support these pieces. These pieces are basically floating. There's nothing really connecting these pieces. So we know we're going to need something here to help support that. And you also have to keep in mind that it will be printing upside down and gravity definitely plays a part in how pieces are going to come out. So that's also something to keep in mind. And Cheetah Box kind of shows you kind of like red areas where it kind of generalizes where you're probably going to need um, supports. All right, so here's a Resident Evil key that um, I have modeled. Let me just leave that. You can also just bring in multiple files if you want to and um, print them all on the same. So it's saying to print it like, you know, like I could print it like flat like this, right? However, it's just going to cause a lot of problems because I'm going to risk having all these supports all over this detailed piece. Um, so to avoid that, 
we definitely want to change the orientation. So I like to think about the part that isn't as important I want to face on the bottom of the base. So I definitely want to rotate it probably at an angle, like up this way, um, and to avoid kind of the parallel, I'm probably just going to, probably the best way to print this would be then to turn it uh, whoops, this way like this. something sort of like this. That way, basically what's facing the bottom, it'll, it's gonna add support on this round piece and these parts down here. And there might be like little tiny small supports in here if it needs to kind of capture the detail, which I said you can carefully remove with like small um, like tweezers even, will pop right off if the contact point is really low before you cure it. And I've had really good results with doing that and it not interfering with um, my piece. You can kind of maneuver these around as you see fit if it's gonna be easier to clean it up in another area. Um, and again, I'll always make sure, cause I do it on medium and these supports look rather light in my opinion. I might add a, a thicker one here for this part here and just kind of going up here and adding more supports, even like supports and supports sometimes, depending, just really depends on the model, but that's kind of how I'd probably place um, this one, just because of where the details are and leaving these supports obviously don't look like enough to me. I highly doubt that this would come out. It's even showing me there should probably be um, some more supports on there. So I'd go through and, and add some of those in here to better support this area. So here is my staff for my Black Queen. And if you've watched my um, prop video, it goes over how this did not quite come out as perfect. I did print right off the plate. Um, one of the reasons is I have these holes here, but because I did that and I didn't have any rafts or anything, um, I ended up having some smushing, smushing happening, and then it finally kind of evened out. And I just think printing right off the plate can be um, a little tricky, not like impossible. This part wasn't super important to me because I was going to be um, basically fusing these two halves together to make my whole staff. However, it did make a lot more work and a lot more cleanup. So. I'm sure if I um, maybe would have did this a little differently and did some kind of raft and elevated this up, it wouldn't have had as many as many issues if I did something quite like this and then still having my holes here. Um, obviously, I, I would need to add a lot more in here, but it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to sand it anyways and I probably would have had um, not as many issues with it coming out. And so from not doing it this way, I think that was mostly um, my problem because when I did print it before, I did just print it directly on the plate. Um, so I don't quite recommend doing it that way. <laughs> At least it didn't really work out for me. So um, I think that would probably make it look differently, but I only really needed one. And honestly, um, I'm able to clean stuff up pretty easily and use my heat gun. And if something gets a little warped or um, if you need to do any kind of filler, um, you can watch my um, fusion video or my cleanup video. If you watch part two of this prop, you'll see how I basically um, fixed it and fused it together and filled any of the gaps up pretty easily. And it probably depends on what you're what you're working on. I didn't really want to waste the, all the resin and the really big print and the time. And for me, um, I work on props a lot, so it's pretty easy for me to um, save. And I'm still learning about resin printing pretty regularly. So, you know, I'm always learning new stuff, but I'm happy to learn with you guys and share with you guys. 
So here's like a great example of some overhang pieces in here. You definitely want to get in, in these pieces um, when you have little details like that. You definitely want to be sure to fill all of this in so that it kind it, it can it can turn out. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you guys in some way. Um, maybe I'll do another video on Shudu Box or a better video or if you guys have any other comments. Um, I know it's a little tricky to be helpful because it really depends on project. And I think over time, uh, once you kind of understand it a little bit more, it gets easier to kind of decide where to put your supports or how heavy you should put your supports and things like that. But I think in time, it won't be so difficult. And I think starting off with auto isn't horrible. Um, I mean, I've always just kind of do that as a guide and then I just change it from there. I know different people have their different methods. This personally has worked for me. There's not really a wrong way, I would say, or a right way. And I think it really just comes down to what you're doing and personal preference, much like mold making, you know, where people decide to put their bleed points and their gates. It's kind of really similar to that and me being somebody who has made molds and stuff. It's pretty much kind of the same thing. You know, you have to put your liquid in and decide where it's going to go and how it's going to need to fill up and basically avoid undercuts and things like that. It is very, very, very similar. If you do a lot of mold making, you can kind of think of it um, that way. And yes, I do have Christmas decorations still up in my studio. Um, you can definitely tell it's an indicator of how busy I am. So um, anyways, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I appreciate the continued support on Twitch. I do have more videos coming. I definitely have a lot of catching up to do. Um, and I'm always learning new stuff every day. So I like to just share this information with you guys the best of my ability. And thank you guys so much for sticking around. And I will see you next time.